Have you ever wondered what the world's best off-roader is? Is it a car? Is it a truck? Well, in this epic TFL challenge, we've put together six of the world's best off-roaders. Three trucks and three cars. And we brought them here to the home of off-roading in the US, Moab, Utah. So, before we get started, let's meet the contestants. All right, starting with the SUVs on the most affordable end of the spectrum and the oldest one here, the 2014 Toyota FJ Cruiser. Moving up from there, we've got the newcomer, the Land Rover Defender. Is it worthy of that Defender name? We're gonna find out today. And then lastly, a legend, the Toyota 4Runner. But not just any 4Runner. This one has been modified by our friends over at Toy Tech, and this thing is a beast. We wanted to throw in a modified vehicle just to salt things up a little bit and to see how modified compares to stock. For the trucks, we have something very special. Right here is the king of full-size pickup off-roaders. It's the Ford Raptor, and it has remained unchallenged for almost 10 years until this truck came along, the brand new 2021 Ram TRX. Yes, it's also here, and both of these trucks are all stock. But just to keep it fair with that modified 4Runner, this Jeep Gladiator Rubicon is modified with Mopar parts. Let's do this. Whoa, hold your horses there, hombre. <laughs> now, what? before we left the office, we did some number crunching, and at least on paper, there is a clear winner. When you use things like the TFL ORI index, fuel economy payload, one of these vehicles stands out above the rest. The TRX? No. What is it? It's the Defender by far. It just <laughs> kills on paper. What? Really? Really, the Defender. The Defender, oh, yeah. Okay. Well, maybe we just throw out the ORI and the numbers and just go hit the trail. Yeah, hell yeah, let's go hit the trail, boys. Come on. All right, well, definitely can't see out of that FJ because the visibility is so bad, which is why I need an app like Onyx Off-Road. Now, when we're out here, it can be kind of hard to figure out where to go because there are just so many trails, but Onyx Off-Road gives you not only trail ratings, but also detailed maps, shows you the coolest campsites, even shows you where to get non-ethanol fuel. And we'll definitely need the fuel for the upcoming episode when we do the TRX Off-Road because that thing's gonna need a lot of it. All right, now I still can't believe that the Defender won on paper. Luckily, we don't drive cars on paper, we drive cars and trucks in the dirt. But uh, there, there's a bit of a problem here because we have like six vehicles and it would take us 13,000 hours to shoot and edit this video. So we're gonna separate it into two parts. First, we're gonna run the cars. They're not cars, they're SUVs. And then we're gonna run the trucks. And then we'll see who is the winner. down into the v-notch oh yeah okay so here I go I'm gonna try to maintain a bit of momentum this is the first time we've actually put this defender in real danger oh Whoa, yeah I wish there was some skill involved in this but it's pretty much just <laughs> point it down and ride the brake okay my inclinometer is off the scale I don't quite see where I am. Oh, sliding, sliding, sliding. Sliding. Uh, oh, yeah. So this is something very special. This is the Toy Tech Forerunner. It's a 2015 Forerunner TRD Pro, so it's already pretty darn off-road worthy. But this one is something else. It's got a three-inch Elka lift. It's got the hefty Fabworks front bumper, a winch in the front. It's falling on 33-inch tires. It's got full protection underneath, a rack on the roof. I mean, this thing is properly built out. And combine that with the fact that it's supercharged, it's one hell of a fast foreigner, although this one, as you see it, is somewhere around $70,000 with all the mods. All right, I am driving the brand new Land Rover Defender, and it is the only vehicle here that is as comfortable driving you or me to a fancy dinner as it is going up and over baby lines back. And that's because it's the only vehicle here that has air suspension and the original and most sophisticated terrain response management control. So it figures out where 
traction is and it takes me wherever I want to go. I'm driving the FJ Cruiser and I could not be happier. It's basically a concept vehicle that came to life. It shares a lot of its underpinnings with the 4Runner, including the engine and the transmission and some of the chassis, but it's a short wheelbase, it's all stock, it's cuter than heck, and I cannot wait to hit the trail. All right, let's get the two most important issues out of the way so you don't have to fill up the comments with them. First and foremost, we air down. And secondly, yes, I know this is a Defender. It is a Land Rover and all of you are saying, but it's not dependable. Yes, the first one we had broke. The second one was broken, but this third one's been a charm. We've put on now almost 3,000 miles on this and it's been rock solid. Now I know 3,000 miles isn't a lot, but that's why we buy these vehicles to test them, to see how they hold up over a year. So. We don't know from personal experience how this particular Defender is gonna do, so let's hold off a year where we can tell you actually what kind of experience we've had with it. The thing I do know about it is, it is by far the most luxurious vehicle here. Like I said, you can take this to dinner, you can take this to the opera, and then you can take it to Moab, and it'll be comfortable in all those situations because, well, that's what it's been designed to do. I'm watching that Defender behind me, I gotta say, it looks a little bit out of place, to be brutally honest. I mean, it's just so smooth, so curvaceous, that polished silver trim. It's not what you need out in Moab. What you need is reliability, toughness, ground clearance. I mean, it's got air suspension, it's got the ground clearance, but I don't know if I trust it day in and day out on the trails. I mean, it's, it's so nice just having traditional, good old fashioned steel springs and a quality shock absorber. That's what's gonna get you home at night. The Defender is very, very capable, it is. I mean, don't get me wrong, that thing will go places you wouldn't believe, but I'm just not sure it'll be as happy as a Toyota doing it. The FJ Cruiser is instantly recognizable from anywhere by anybody. And it's kind of a shame, I think, that in 2014, after that model year, Toyota stopped selling the FJ Cruiser in the United States. But it is still at its soul a very good off-roader because it has excellent approach and departure angles, great clearance even for the stock model, rear locker, and the visibility towards the front is not too bad. And it's the only vehicle here out of these three SUVs that's actually gaining value as I drive it. Hey guys, I gotta say, by far, I've got the most elegant, best looking, classy vehicle here. Andre, I'm sorry, but that uh, FJ looks like a scared rabbit with big ears, and Tommy, you've got an angry bird. Yeah, that, uh, that, that Land Rover would look very good outside of Buckingham Palace on the nice, smooth, paved roads, but out here, it's just not going to be as it looks kind of out of place, to be brutally honest with you, Dad. It doesn't look particularly at home. The 4Runner is at home, especially with these big Dura tracks and that crazy front end. This thing is badass. No, no, no. I beg to differ. When my son was three years old, he knew what an FJ Cruiser was because it's so recognizable, so iconic. And the Defender, I'm sorry, it looks like a bus. Uh, Ferrari, not too bad. And let's talk about utility, boys. I'm also the only vehicle here that has a third row, which means that I can comfortably seat not just, you know, three people, but four, five, six, or even seven in a pinch. Andre, you can't get out of the back of that FJ without opening the front door, effectively locking your rear passengers in. And Tommy, I mean, you've got, you know, two doors, but no one can sit in the back. Uh, I can bring my uh, most favorite person next to me. That's all I need. I'm sorry, I didn't realize this was a competition on who could take the most people to school. I'm looking around and not seeing any tow trucks near here either, so uh, I think that makes us pretty even. And by the way, my FJ Cruiser weighs like half of what you guys weigh as far as total uh, vehicle weight. So here we have this cool V-notch. It's going to be a great test of approach and departure angle. You can see where Tons and tons of vehicles have scraped their departure angle. So we're gonna drive the Foreigner, then the Defender, then the FJ through and see if any of them scrape. There should be no problems for this Toyota with this lift and these aftermarket bumpers. 
Just got such a crazy amount of approach and departure angle. Let's see what happens. Cruising down into the V-notch. Feeling pretty good so far. Oh yeah. And on the departure, taking it nice and slow. Do have that spare tire carrier. Oh, it's great. No, it won't. Good work, Forerunner. My only worry really here is I put on a little recovery uh, hitch hook behind the back of this uh, Defender because uh, the recovery points aren't actually accessible on this model. You have to get like the X to get those big recovery points. So um, that could hit. We'll see. I'll have Tommy watch it and if it's about to hit, I'll just take it out. Uh, because it's actually not helping, it's making things worse. Alright, looking good. Yeah, watch that recovery hitch. I can always take it out, Tommy. Nice and slow. Almost there. Fortunately, not too much protection in the front, but I think you're going to clear it. Yep, looking good. Yeah, you're good. Oh, yeah. Air suspension, baby! Terrain management, working hard. Whew. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I have an advantage here on this test because short wheelbase. And actually pretty good angles. 34 degrees of approach, about 30 degrees of departure. But no other modifications really. Yep, you're looking good, Andre. Stock, ground clearance, and Obviously, I haven't done this obstacle in an FJ before. How am I looking? Plenty of room. So my nose is clearing. That's good. Oh, yeah, you're good. <laughs> you know what? I'm used to driving this trail in a giant pickup truck. So this is actually a pleasant experience because it's, this vehicle is so small and tidy. All right, so this is what we call the frame bender. It's this big gnarly step on this like 30 degree down slope, and um, we're probably gonna hit some frames. All right, here we go in the forerunner. Four low, let me put crawl control on, why not? That's a slow speed. It does sound a little bit like sneakers in the dryer. All right. You can see this is uh, part of the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming, coming, coming. A half a foot. Okay, you're gonna drop now. Now you're gonna drop. There you go. Going over the drop. Oh yeah. Woo! Wow, that's good. Yeah. All right, well, we made it down there in the Forerunner, no problem, but now my dad's gonna try it out in the uh, Kia, uh, sorry, Defender, and um, we'll probably have to take him in on a slightly easier line so we don't go smashing like a fuel tank into a rock that's not protected. Tommy just uh, hit the uh, V-ring on the lifted Forerunner, and uh, yeah, it's super steep and pretty sketchy just because there is no stopping once you go over that ledge. I got it, you got 10 feet. All right. Eight feet. All right. Seven. Six. This is the first time we've actually put this Defender in real Four. danger. Three. And most... Two feet. Most people don't do this okay, until... Okay, about another foot, you're gonna start to dip. Turn a little bit left, a little bit driver. Okay, here it comes. Oh. Oh yeah. I say most people don't do this. Most people don't do this to the brand new Defender until they've owned it for like seven years. All right, watch the back. This is what I'm. This is the one that worries me. Yep. Three feet. All right. Two feet. All right. Okay. I'm in rock. One foot. All right, we're about to go down. Am I gonna hit? Am I take the back end off? Well, 
there's nothing we can do now, so if you do, no, you do. Go, go slowly. Nice and slow, you're about to drop down. Alright, here we go. Slow, Not... slow as you can. Nice and slow. Uh, independent right. suspension, is it good? That's it. Wow, that was incredible. What is nice. happening? Wow, nothing, man. That was a lifted forerunner that slammed its ass, and the defender just tiptoed right over it. I'm bare grills. No, that was really surprising how well that kind of crawled down that. Um, didn't even slam the uh, back end, which I thought it would. All right, now it's the FJ's turn, and these are dangerous obstacles that can do damage to vehicles, so we're putting our most experienced driver behind the wheel, which at this point happens to be Tommy, plus Andre's filming a behind the scenes video. All right, dude, let's see what this thing does. As you can see, here comes the FJ. All right, here we go. You feel like eight feet? They don't have eight feet. That is not an eight footer. I can tell you that from here. Five feet. I'll stop you before you get to it. Just point it straight down. My inclinometer says we are at 32 degrees. Okay, hold up, hold up. Now nice and slow, you're six inches from the ledge. We are maxed out on the inclinometer, actually. And you're about to go over. Here we go. Hard on the brakes. Don't kill me. Whoa, Whoa, I was in the wrong place. Yeah, maybe don't stand right in front of it. <laughs> That's the extreme angle. Tommy's doing a great job. Let's see how the tail right, does. Hold up, Tommy. You got another foot. Keep going. One foot. Six inches. Like really slow now. Just super slow now. Let's not slap the tail. We're about to go over. Oh, the exhaust pipe, bro, man. We're going to hit the exhaust pipe. We'll see. Slow, 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 go slow. Oh, a little bit of a hitch. Oh, sweet. I the hitch, but otherwise you were okay. Nice, nice. That's great news. I gotta tell you, I think I picked the right vehicle. The Defender was the only one that didn't hit. Uh, so, yeah. This is uh, what's on paper might be what we're seeing in the real world. This is One Tree Hill. It's a very steep hill off camber. If you get it wrong, you just slide into the tree. Okay, climbing up the hill. Rear diff lock engaged, which the Defender doesn't have. Something definitely flew back there. Oh, no issues. These uh, dirt tracks in down roll up pretty much anything. All the contents from the back seat in the trunk have now shifted to a not in the back seat or the trunk. So here we go. Let's see how this bad boy does. Once again, air down, terrain management control doing all the hard work, and I'm just uh, enjoying the ride, letting the Land Rover's electronics figure it out. So far, not a wheel wrong. Oh my God, that was easy. That was so easy. Okay, so here I go. I'm gonna try to maintain a bit of momentum. And as I'm climbing, things are falling. And you know what? My tires, my Cooper Discoverer, squeal just a little tiny bit. All right, next up is the butt clencher. This is a incredibly steep decline on slick rock. It's gotta be like 40 degrees, I mean, it's insane. Just can't see anything but ground, and you're held in by your seatbelt. A little nervous about this. Let me engage crawl control, like that. It's the slowest setting. Here we go. <laughs> it's about to get real steep real soon. And there it is. <laughs> Oh man, everything has just gone flying. I've coated the bulkhead now with luggage and cameras and wires, but we're doing it! The Forerunner's a monster! What a machine! <laughs> just like that, I think we're down. Pretty damn impressive, Toyota. If you like hanging from uh, your uh, <laughs> seatbelt like I'm doing, this is really fun. It's a test of uh, grip, uh, and uh, so far, uh, so good. This truck is just uh, rocking it. 
Oh yeah. And of course everything in the back seat comes flying forward. Question is, will it hit its butt? I don't think so. I'm really gaining a lot of uh, respect and appreciation for just how much engineering went into this. Okay, my inclinometer is off the scale. I don't quite see where I am. Okay. Now I can kind of see. And I'm staring into the abyss and I'm trying to <laughs> Things are actually falling. Some of my cargo is shifting. And I'm staring into the unknown. Okay, let me see how I can negotiate this. Yeah, my inclinometer is off the scale. Oh, come on. Ah! Didn't touch it? Yes! Whew. All right, gentlemen, before we get to the last obstacle, I want to know, how, Tommy, how are you liking that forerunner? Oh, the four is so good out of the box already, and the is just insane. It's, uh, it would take a lot more than um, anything I'd be comfortable with to, to actually challenge this thing because it's just so capable. And Andre, how are you liking the Andre? <laughs> You know, dude, so far, I feel great. How's the Defender? Uh, the Defender is incredibly capable. I'm just surprised at how much bandwidth this has, you know? It's uh, so far done everything I've asked of it and hasn't broken a sweat. This Forerunner, especially when you build it like this, kind of challenges the pre preconception that they're not rock crawlers. I mean, there's a lot of people that think you gotta get a Wrangler with solid axles to do some pretty cool stuff, but... Uh, this toy tech rig begs to differ. Yeah, I mean, it's like the TRD Pro Pro, right? That's really where they've taken it. Yeah, like the uh, TRD Mentor for all the other TRD Pros. Dude, I'm having a bad hair day. What can I do about that? Nothing. It's not about hair. You're in a Defender. You should have some hairspray back there, shouldn't you? It looks like there's a bird's nest on top of my head. I'm feeling really self-conscious right now. Most Land Rover folks would reach into their Louis Vuitton and pull out uh, uh, their hair product. <laughs> All right, here we've got the butt scratcher, really steep descent, that's the mini butt scratcher. And then this, this is the big butt scratcher. This is where you uh, <laughs> nose the front end of the vehicle way down into the sand, and then the rear end just goes dragging across the hard, unforgiving rock. Let's see what happens in the Forerunner. This is the first downhill. Oh, it's amazing. It really is so much grip, and these Dura tracks are holding well. Uh, all the rigs are aired down today. I did learn my lesson about this poor, poor D ring. <laughs> Let me take it nice and slow there. Oh, what a beauty. I wish there was some skill involved in this, but it's pretty much just <laughs> point it down and ride the brake. First gear, low range, but it's not going to give me the control I need. Even crawl control might be too fast. I can see nothing but sand right now. Absolutely nothing. Let's see, is the front end gonna plow? How we doing? All right, now for the part I do have to be a little careful about. Here, I'll start to turn, just so I can kinda... Come on, forwarder. Oh! Oh, I almost got away with it. Just a little tiny scrape. And down we go. And this is a test of approach and departure angle. Many vehicles will bury their nose in the sand and then, of course, really scratch their butt on the way down. And it's really about control and traction and just how composed the vehicle is when you put it into a situation with loose sand, slick rock, and a lot of incline and uh, yeah no problem that was easy peasy lemon squeezy i've seen vehicles actually break an a-arm on this obstacle last time we were here actually they broke an a-arm and what happened was we were stuck here for about an hour while they tried to ratchet strap the jeep's arm back into a uh, place so they could move it all right here comes a big boy ass scratcher it's 
straight down. I'm just going to trust the approach and departure angle here. Oh, sliding, sliding, sliding. Sliding. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, here I go. Big old digger. <laughs> so much weight. One wheel in the air now. Will I hit anything? I'm not hearing anything. Clean as a whistle. <laughs> that is incredible. All right, so I'm approaching my first of the last obstacles, which is the little butt scratcher. <laughs> That's our name for it. And I'm trying to hit it kind of straight on because I don't want to go sideways and maybe really hurt something underneath. And the bottom of this is pretty sandy. You go slowly here. Now here I need to make sure I'm in the right line. Okay, so I'm heading down the big butt scratcher. And it's really kind of not really comfortable. It never gets old. <laughs> Actually staring at just dirt. Going down a little bit. Trying to go slowly. Hit, Andre. Am I hitting? Oh, you're so close. Oh, you're hitting. Now you're hitting. Am I plowing? Yeah, a little bit. I'm plowing sand. That's not good. Not well, supposed to be. Not supposed to be plowing. That's my hitch. Yeah, that's, that's a tiny bit of hitch. Just a little bit of plowing, dude. A little okay. bit of hitch and plow. Oh. Guys, the loser today is my hair by far, <laughs> but we have to pick a winner before we go run the truck. So, uh, which would you guys choose? I, I gotta say, I mean, it was the best on paper, and kind of the Defender killed it. That, that really pains me to say because I love the Toyotas, but man, what a what a beast! How about I'll you, Andre? I was very surprised. I had fun in the FJ Cruiser, but when you were doing those obstacles without touching anything in the Defender, I was shocked. Yeah, you know, I'm being kind of a fanboy, but you have to admit, it did everything the Toyota did, uh, and it, you know, didn't struggle at all, whereas yours did hit and did struggle in some places. So I think the Defender wins it for the cars. Now we got to go get the trucks and do the same thing, and then we got to pick an overall winner. Oh my gosh, it's going to be a long and fun day. Let's go do it. So Andre, what do you think won in the trucks? So I'm gonna drop into the V-notch. The nose is protected. I've got skid plates everywhere. Yeah. So going down the butt clencher, you can see it's pulling the vehicle at 0.6 of a mile an hour. I'm looking straight down once again. And... Look, no hands. Let's go. Oh. Okay, you got the pipe. Yeah, your truck's a little obnoxious, so I gotta say, I'm, I'm right behind it on this trail. It's beautiful and peaceful, and all I hear is...